Well, I developed the original SimCity way back. Uh, started working on it in the early 80s. I was doing a game before that where you flew around these islands and blew them up, and I had to actually create these islands. I had to draw them for the game. And I found that I was having much more fun creating these things than I was bombing them. I always enjoyed building models as a kid, and here on the computer I was able to build a model that actually had dynamics, came to life. And that's what kind of drove me toward The Sims. You know, originally it started out, you know, very focused on architecture, but to kind of score and analyze the architecture, you need to have people living in these structures. And so we started developing a simulation of people just kind of living their lives out. And the people became so fascinating to interact with and manipulate that that became a focus of the game of The Sims. There was a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek kind of irony in The Sims that uh, a lot of it was about acquiring the stuff to make your Sims happy, but uh, at some point you acquired so much stuff that uh, it was diminishing returns. And then later, you know, the stuff that was supposed to make you happy was the stuff that was, you know, sucking up all your time. It was very much a time management game. You know, I think the one thing I really wanted to do, it wasn't so much a, a message about this is the way cities work, but it was more having the players, you know, go through that process of discovery, like I did. You know, how can I take the system and make it a toy so that somebody playing with the toy uh, will start to realize how intricate these systems are and how interesting and how balanced. Berkeley is a nice location. It's very central. There's also a lot of unique thinkers in Berkeley, which I like, you know, people that have not only kind of a sense of you know, progress in the future in technology, but also of the past and, you know, social, political kind of forces that we're, you know, embedded in. Uh, it's just, it's a very comfortable place to be strange. Well, Berkeley has an amazing resource and, you know, the UC campus there, you know, with uh, just an amazing amount of, you know, bright, creative, very motivated people coming out of there. There's a wonderful opportunity to kind of foster more of a startup culture uh, in Berkeley. You know, kind of the generation of interactive designers, game designers like myself, we're all basically self-taught. You know, there was no academic path for that whatsoever. Um, right now, there are several schools that have very excellent programs, places like uh, uh, Carnegie Mellon or USC, Georgia Tech, uh, UC Santa Cruz, all have excellent interactive design programs. But uh, really, at the end of the day, you have to have a passion for it, no matter what it is, you know. The best programmers I've seen are the ones that, you know, taught themselves programming at 10 years old and have been doing it, you know, through most of their teenage years. Most of the great designers are people that have been designing whatever they could, you know, from an early age. And so I don't think it really matters what you're doing, but if you have a passion for it and you would be doing it no matter what, whether somebody paid you or not, um, that's the path your career should probably take, you know, not going and learning a skill so you can get a job. Well, I've lately become very interested in these mobile devices we carry in our pockets and how much of a data wake that we leave behind us. I'm very captivated by this idea that, you know, can something sitting in your pocket just passively observing you eventually create something like a graphic novel of your life? You know, how can I reflect your life back to you in a way to where you're seeing it uh, from a very objective point of view and getting insights into who you are?